Hello, my name is Terry and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about inductance and inductive reactants. Now this one video can by all means it cannot cover everything about this here topic because it is a very detailed subject, but I thought we could make it a little interesting. We'll talk a little bit about theory and we will do an experiment in measuring an inductor and see how close we come. Now before we do the experiment, we got to do a little bit of a uh, whiteboard here to understand what we're going to be doing. So let's uh, start off with a generator. Okay, now we're going to have a generator that's going to be putting out an AC sine wave. It's a function generator. And this here generator, like most of them, has an internal output impedance. And this one is 50 ohms, which is pretty typical. So we need to make a note of that. So that's going to be, we're going to call that R source resistor source. And we're going to say he is 50 ohms. Now, we're going to leave this here. This is our leads coming out from the function generator. We're going to leave that open for right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to be setting an amplitude of voltage peak to peak over here. And we're going to be setting up a voltage divider. And this voltage divider is going to be consisting of this 50 ohm resistor and our inductive reactants of our coil, which is going to be placed right across here. Inductive reactants, what is that? Okay, inductive reactants is, uh, well, it's measured, in, it's measured in ohms, resistance, but it's a hidden resistance that you can't measure with any meter. It's a resistance that's calculated. And it's when you put an alternating current on a coil. Now, if I, took a, if I took a DC voltage source, to give you kind of an example here, and let's say that I had a, oh, I don't know, let's say a 10 volt DC, and I took and I put that and fed it to a coil, okay, that had a resistance of 2 ohms. And I said, okay, after this here coil has went through its charge period, it went through, say, it's five time constants, and that's another thing we can talk about in another video. What would be the, what would be the amperage of it? Well, 10 volts divided by 2 ohms, 5 amps. Okay? 5 amps, nothing there. You probably already knew all that. However, if I take and put a AC source across this same coil, let's say, then as I increase the frequency, this here resistance, not the resistance of the coil itself as far as the windings, but this hidden resistance is going to start to increase. It's going to be like this here resistance is magically going to start appearing in the circuit, and this here amperage is going to start to go down as the frequency goes up. Now that's called inductive reactants, and it's all because of the coil inducing a voltage back in itself to oppose the source voltage, and also it's it's opposing the, the change in current. So all of that's kicking in and that's where we have this here inductive reactance. Now the inductive reactance while we're talking about it, X is reactance, L is inductance, that's the symbol for it, is equal to 2 pi times F times L. Where 2 pi, we're talking about an AC circuit, 2 pi is for the circumference basically going around a circle for making one cycle, say, of a generator. Now we have F, which is frequency, and we have L, which is inductance, which is measured in Henry's. A Henry, again, another video to cover this, a Henry is where an inductor will induce one volt for one amp of change in current in one second. All right, so here is our equation. Now, so what we're going to be doing is, with this here, we're going to be putting that inductor across right over here. Now, the manufacturer says that the inductor measures 0.300 millihenries. So we'll put him right there as a reminder. Okay? Now, I have 50 ohms here. Now what I want is I want 50 ohms of inductive reactants across this here for this here inductor. So I'm going to put down here XL. I want 50 ohms. 
Now I want one bolt dropped across here for the XL. I want 50 across the resistor. Now the question is, what is going to be the voltage for my source to give me one volt across the resistor, one volt across my XL for my inductor, inductive reactants? And you're probably thinking, two volts, right? Add one volt here, one volt there, get two volts. Nope, that's not it. The reason is that the voltage that's induced across the inductor is 90 degrees out of phase with the voltage that's dropped across this resistor. The voltage and current through the resistor are in phase. However, the voltage that's across the inductor is 90 degrees out of phase with this one. So you cannot add them up. So you have to do what's called phasor addition or vector addition. Phasor is a vector which rotates. Okay? You know, just like the generator goes around. It can be any type of voltage. A vector, same thing, except the vector is usually with a straight it doesn't rotate, has magnitude, okay? In this case, it has some voltage, and it has a direction. So let's get to the vector addition. Let's see what voltage we do need to set this generator up so we know, you know, to get uh, an accurate result. We do a vector addition by drawing a phasor addition. This is a phasor has a magnitude, I draw the length of the line to represent the magnitude, how much, and the direction. So this is going to be my reference. Usually the reference is going to be what's like this here resistor. It's zero degrees phase. There's no phase shift between the current and the voltage waveform. Zero degrees phase shift. So that right there is going to be my voltage, let's say, across the resistor. Now, the voltage across the inductor is 90 degrees out of phase with this voltage. So we're going to put him up at 90 degrees up here. We'll call him VL. Now, if I redraw this and I put VR over here, I could take my, my vector here, as long as I don't change the, the length of it, I can take it and move it and slide it right over here to the right. So let's do that. So typically what you will do is you will draw an arrow, an arrow tip to the tail of the next arrow. And then that will leave this line right here. And as you can see, what we have here is a right angle triangle. And this is our hypotenuse over here. Now that is going to be our VS. That's what we're trying to solve for over here to know what what kind of voltage do we need to put out now remember VR I want one volt peak to peak across it and when I have that I know I have one volt peak to peak across my my inductor which is what we're measuring okay so how do we solve for what VS is well we could use Pythagorean theorem you remember that it was probably in what the eighth grade so if I take and square the hypotenuse that's going to be equal to VR squared plus VL squared. Well, I want to solve for V, so I take the square root of both sides. Take the square root of V squared, I get V. And this is VS. This is our voltage source. So I'm getting VS is equal to the square root of VR squared plus VL squared. Now you can see why I made it simple, making it one volt. If I put one volt here across my, my resistor and I square it, one, one squared is one, one times one. My voltage that's across the inductor is one, I square that is one. Now I take one plus one, right? One squared plus one squared. You can see that I'm gonna get two. Now I have the square root of 2 is equal to Vs. Now if I take the square root of, of 2, I'm going to get 1.414 volts. And that is peak to peak. So that is what we want to set our generator to. So it's interesting that if we have 1 volt peak to peak across our inductor, and then that means it's 1 volt peak to peak across our internal resistance of our generator, we need to put out 
1.4 round and we're going to just round it off we'll say 1.4 volts peak to peak for this to happen to get these voltage drops across equally now once we do that then we're going to come back and we're going to use our equation here for inductive reactants. So bringing it over here, we're going to solve for L because that's what we're looking for. We want to know what, what kind, what, how much inductance does this here inductor have. So we're going to take and we're going to solve for L. So that's going to be L is equal to inductive reactants divided by 2 pi over F. So, what is our inductive reactants? Well, it's going to be 50 ohms because 50 ohms, when we get our voltages equal, we know that it's going to be 50 ohms of inductive reactants. So, we're going to put in that. We'll put our 50 here. We're going to do our 2 pi. Pi, of course, you know, is three, about 3.14. Multiply that, you'll get about 6.28. Then, we're going to multiply that times our frequency. Well, what is our frequency? Our frequency is what we're going to adjust to get one volt peak to peak across the inductor. Once we get one volt peak to peak, we're going to look and see what that frequency is to make that happen. If you look at our equation, look, as a frequency goes up, our inductive reactance goes up. Our ohms goes up. The ohms goes up, that means the voltage across it is going to go up. So if we look at it and we say we had 1.3 volts. Let's say we had 1.3 volts across our inductor. Well, we need to bring the voltage down. How do we do that? So we're going to bring the frequency down. Frequency comes down, inductive reactance comes down. Inductive reactance comes down, the voltage across it goes down. So that just gives you an idea what we're going to be doing in this here next part of the video we're going to do the experiment now and then we're going to come back and then we're going to see how close did we get to the manufacturer's uh, value of 300 millihenries. So let's go ahead and let's do the experiment now. All right the first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure this here inductor. Now from the manufacturer you can see that it is 300 millihenries. Told you earlier we're going to set this here up for 1.41 volts peak to peak. Now right now it's, it's pretty close, it's like 1.39, 1.40. If I go up in the amplitude, and let me hit amplitude, and if I go up, let's go 0.69, and it'll probably go up a little high. It's going to 0 0.42, 0 0.41. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, now this is the open circuit voltage of the function generator. So we're gonna go over here, we're gonna hook it up these two leads up to the leads that's coming out of the function generator. So there's one lead and here's the here's the other one. Now as you can see on the oscilloscope the voltage has dropped down to 1.32. So we're going to be adjusting the frequency of the generator until we get one volt peak to peak at least get close to it. Now if we look at the generator, right now we're at 100 hertz. So let's go ahead and let's try 50 hertz. So you see it dropped down to 1.18. Let's try 25 hertz. That's 0.95. So let's go back up. As I increase the frequency, the inductive reactance is going to increase, which is then is going to make the voltage increase. So let's try, let's try 27. Oops. Okay, let's try 27 hertz. Twenty-eight. So it looks pretty close. I'm going to call it 28 hertz. Okay, for this 300 millihenry inductor that we've just measured here, we're also going to be looking at uh, this with an LCR meter. 
So I want to point out that this here, 300 millihenries from the manufacturer, it has a tolerance of plus or minus 15%. Now on the LCR meter, we are measuring 295.1 millihenries. Okay, we're back from the experiment, so let's look at our results and see how we did. Now, as a, as a recap, as a reminder, the manufacturer specs on this here choke uh, inductor was 300 millihenries with a tolerance of plus or minus 15%. That means that we could go on anywhere from 255 millihenries all the way up to 345 millihenries, and we would have been okay. So anywhere in this here spec, we would have been fine. Now we used the LCR to measure it. We found out that it was 295.1 millihenries. Now, we took the frequency, we adjusted it until we had one volt across the inductor, which means our inductive reactance for the inductor was 50 ohms. That was found to be 28 hertz is where that frequency was for that to happen. Now we're gonna take and we're gonna plug in our numbers to see where we're at. Okay, so we have XL inductive reactance equals two pi times the frequency times the inductance. We want to solve for inductance. So that is going to be L is equal to inductive reactance divided by two pi times the frequency. Well, what was our XL? Well, that was 50 ohms. So now 50 ohms and remember the 50 ohms that we're talking about as far as inductive reactants is the reactants that the, the inductor is giving to the circuit. This is what it feels like as far as that when this voltage is applied and the current at that frequency of 28 hertz, we had an inductive reactance of 50 ohms. Okay, now 2 pi times the frequency which is 28. Now, I've already calculated it out to save us a little time. And it comes out to be 284.205 millihenries, which is not too far from 300 of the spec. In fact, it actually, when we measured it, it was 295, okay, to, 290, to 284. So we came very close. Now let's see how much of an error that is in our measurement here. So I'm going to just round this off to 284. And we will just use our actual measurement that we measured of 295. All right, so we're going to take the percent difference, which is 295 minus 284. Divided by our measurement of 295, we will say this is the more, more accurate one. And let's see what the percentage is on that. So 295 minus 284 divided by 295 and I get 3.7% difference. So, not too bad, you know, for, for doing a method like we did over here. So, the biggest thing is, you know, it's, a lot of people I know you don't have a scope, don't have a fo function generator, but I'm just showing you other methods, you know, that uh, taking some of the theory and applying it and then coming out with getting our answer very close to what an LCR meter, you know, would actually measure. So I hope you enjoyed the video. We we'll hope to do some more of this here where we're going to try to do some theory. But I also like to do some experiments and tie them together. I think that's a good way to learn instead of just throwing a lot of math up here and you don't understand what's going on. And if you do the theory behind it along with the experiment, hopefully it'll, it'll sink in and make a little more sense. So you guys take care and we'll see you in the next one.